wasn't what you were borrowing. This wasn't what you were borrowing for. I see. That's good business sense. No, the bank mm -hmm. would offer you six percent. The EFPA would offer you twelve. And that is the report, of Jeremy. The bank is taking your money at six percent and lending it at sixteen well, percent. The banks are still standing. Clico is not. Yes, but but the point I'm making is that is not the fault of the policy holder. That's the regulators. Fault. Well, I'm not saying it's the fault of the policy. I'm saying yes. the policy holder was naive. No, he wasn't naive. The policyholder understood the me mechanics of the product. In other words, he understood how he was able to get 9% because the po company was saving money by passing borrowing the middle it, by passing out the middle Okay, passing. Douglas, you want to comment? Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to comment on that. Sure. I think that is a, a really um, either naive or convenient explanation. Well, it sounds convenient to me. Because All excuses, what, 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 what really happens with a bank is that when a bank takes a deposit, they are required to set aside a certain amount right. with the central bank as a reserve so that for every dollar they take, and over, over many years it has been as high as 20-something percent of every dollar, goes into a reserve so that they really only have 70-odd cents to lend. And when we, when we try to link uh, the EFP as a product that is sold all over the world, we miss the point that when people take in money for a two-year or a five-year or a three-year horizon, they put the money in investments for a two-year, three-year, or five-year investment. They don't take the money for a two, three, and five-year and put it in 25 and 30-year investments in high-risk projects, taking both currency mismatch as well as duration mismatch. And then, when it goes sour, look to blame it on in fact, something Jeremy, else. Darren, I'm sorry. Yes. Jeremy, I'm sorry. Well, come yeah. in, Patrick. Patrick sure. Therein sorry. lies the problem. The, the fact is that the taking of this, it was fairly well known at that point in time that these things were going to be invested in fairly high risk things, eh? including methanol. And it certainly went that way very, very early. When well, your methanol and was looking very good. It for did a well in the beginning, but it, it, that, it's high risk. That, the same thing you mentioned, high risk, high return. At one time, methanol could be high. At one time, it could be low. So the, the moment methanol ceases to do well, you, you, are, you are in problems. And so many people, when approached, myself included, to go into these things, backed away because they understood the, the kind of thing. I don't think I'm, I'm brighter than anyone else. And by the way, I should tell you there are PhDs in economics, like myself, who went into this scheme. Yes, eh? yes. So it is not necessarily the, the, the wisdom of, 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 of a profession that, 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 that causes that. It's that people kept away from it. What I, however, would not want to say, I don't want to go into to, to, to the blaming game as such. The problem is we have a problem. We're not and, in the blame game. Yeah, we're and we, we're we, calling a spade a spade. Yeah, and we want to deal with it. And the government's position was precisely that. We found ourselves in a problem where we face systemic risk. And I want to say a few, a few things about that. And we stepped in in order to deal with this. And if I should say so myself, I think we did so admirably. I think when we stepped in, the six billion uh, in assets of the bona fide insurance policy, and by the way, I want to tell the national community this. Because up to today, I spoke to someone with a traditional annuity type policy, the one you contribute to on a monthly basis, not the one that is called a fancy name of a single annuity, a single mm -hmm. annuity premium. This is one where you contribute every month, and when you get to your retirement age, you're going to get, you're going to get some money, or there's some uh, time it's, it's, going to, it's going to come. What you had in, in guise of an, of an insurance product was a fixed deposit of, of, of sorts. So just as how you put money into a, into a bank for a certain amount of time, so the product to compare that to was a fixed deposit, which incidentally carried deposit insurance with it. Eh? So for all those who feel that because a regulator is standing by that things cannot go wrong, even if they are doing the job well, things can go wrong. And that is why we have a deposit insurance act. Mm -hmm. So for instance, people should know that if they have $100,000 in a deposit account, and the bank goes belly up, which could happen, God forbid. They'll get back 75,000. 75 and no more. And that is because that is what they insured for. Yes. They could probably go into making claims about it afterwards. But many people stuck with the 3% and the 2% and so on, while interest rates were being paid at a much higher rate. And as you quite rightly pointed out, people ought to know that high risk, high return. The fact is, many people didn't. And I am hoping that a lesson is learned in this. At the same time, our business in the government is to sort the problem out. So what did we do? We offered 90% of the clients of Clico, that's 225,000 out of 200 of 250, that their policies, their classic insurance policies, their classic annuities and so on, they are safe. 
I ask the national community, in particular those policyholders, do not go into a panic because a lot of stories are going wrong. Your policies are safe. The people who are affected are the 25,000 people who were involved in these short-term investment schemes that, in my view, they paraded as policies. And I, I want to, to make... Well, we'll come, to, we'll come to the evolution of that. No, uh, no but the, the point is, I want the, that, that to be yes, honest. Yes, I think the point is well taken. Okay. Peter, yeah. let me let you come in in all fairness. Yeah. yeah. The arguments that uh, Douglas is making and Patrick are making are really arguments directed at shareholders and the management of Clico because shareholders take risk in terms of the underlying investments that Clico would get into. Those EFPA policyholders, those policies were approved initially by the supervisor of insurance and secondly by the central bank when the insurance companies moved over the central bank. Way in back in 1990, I understand. In 2000, yes, way back in 1990 on the mm -hmm. supervisor of insurance and later in 2004 when they were transferred to the central bank. In addition to which, those policies were backed by f f assets in the statutory fund. And as Douglas knows, very well knows, that a deposit is not backed by any assets in any statutory fund. You have to have an insurance product. And more than that, they were regulated by the central bank. So if anything went wrong, that, cannot, that blame cannot be placed on the policyholders. That blame goes squarely on the shoulders of the, the regulators, which is the central bank. So that argument, I do buy that argument at all. And to come back to the point about deposits, there, are no, there were no deposits in Clico. If there were deposits, then they would have had to have those reserves that, that, that Douglas is talking about, the primary and secondary reserves, of around 20 cents in Peter, total. Peter, let me interject here for, for a second, in, in fairness. There were a number of short-term deposit facilities available to investors at the time. The only company in this country offering these EFPAs yes was Clico. Yes, but were they well, no, no, please, let, no, no, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me spell Once it out. Once I get out, my opportunity. Let me spell it out clearly. Go right ahead, The Jeremy. only company offering that product yes. was Clico. Yes. No other insurance company, and there are many others, so. no bank. The rates being paid were in some cases 50%, 80% higher than were available to people in traditional financial institutions. Forget all the approvals. Forget the history. No, that no, no. It's convenient to forget. No, no, that. no, no, no. Yeah. I'm an investor with money. One company, one alone, is offering me 50% more than anybody else on the market. My antennae don't go up. But I don't say, hang on, is this too good to be true? Because I'll tell you, Peter, during that time, many people called me for financial advice and said, should I put my money in this instrument? And I said, does it sound too good to be true? And they said, yes. I said, well, it probably is. Now, what's your answer to that? My answer just explained the mechanics of how they were able to what, pay 9 and 10%. They put their faith, they put their they faith borrowed in the their money directly from the, pers the depositors. The, why didn't they, any they other... They didn't go through the intermediary financial institutions. Why didn't any other insurance What is so difficult company, to understand about that? As a matter of fact... Why weren't they copied by other insurance companies? I if it was so that, brilliant. That is not my business to figure out why they weren't copied. What my business is as a policyholder is to find out if this instrument is approved by the central bank. My job is not to go behind that approval to determine whether the central bank did their due diligence. If you get a, a drug that is approved by the FDA or the, the, the Ministry of Health, do you go to yes. Kariri and some other institution to test to see if that, that product is safe to, to eat Thalidomide or drink? Thalidomide was approved Come by on, the Jeremy. FDA. Come on, Jeremy. Come on, Jeremy. It, 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 it it's convenient spastics. now. Hindsight is always 2020 vision. Well. It's convenient for people to look back and say, well, you know, we're going to separate these and call them traditional, and we're going to separate these and call them fixed deposits. You know why? Because one is $6 billion and the other one is a $12 billion headache. So we could get this $12 billion headache and, and tell these people, we're not going to pay you all as we go to treat this six billion. It's convenient, Jeremy. Let's be serious here. I want to say in, in, yes, in Patrick, Peter's defense, in. though, that there is clearly a regulatory problem here. And, and, and yes, whereas you are saying something that is true, people took wine and tried to pass it for rum, and the regulator said it was rum. Thank you and very much. That was a problem. Now, I don't know if the regulator had the right to do that. I mean, in all fairness, but I buy the point that the, 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 the so-called investor may not, may not have known that. There is a problem that occurred that people have to respond to and are going to be responsible for. That the, to the extent that people were duped all around into doing this thing, answers have to be had. And whereas I do believe that people who 
it, I have to insist, and this is where I change course with, with, with Peter here, that even when a regulator is in control, things will go wrong. Mm -hmm. Things could go wrong and things have gone wrong.